consider a particle that's moving in one dimension. That means it's just moving along a line. And it's moving in the same direction, and we have a graph of its position versus time shown here. So this axis is the time axis, and this axis up here, S, shows its position at any given time. And we want to calculate the average velocity between two different times, maybe these two times right here. And so I could label the first time T1, and I could label the second time T2. And if I have two times, I have two corresponding positions. The position of the particle at time T1 would be S1, and the position of the particle at time T2 would be S2. And so then I could calculate the average velocity by just looking at the change in position over the change in time. So V bar is what we use to represent average velocity. And that would look something like the change in S over the change in T. And I can do that. That's just S2 minus S1 divided by T2 minus T1. And this might look familiar. This kind of looks like you're calculating a slope. And it would be the slope of this blue line right here. And in fact, that's true. The average velocity equals the slope of the secant line. So this line is called a secant line. A secant line is just a line that connects any two points on a graph. So a secant line to a curve is a line determined by two points on the curve. So for example, if we have some function and we label two points, maybe a point P and a point Q, and we connect them with a line, call that line L, this line L would be the secant line. And this is the function y equals f of x. So to find the equation of that secant line, it's actually pretty easy. We can assign coordinates to the two points, maybe call point P x1 comma y1 and point Q x2 comma y2. And we know the equation of a line in general is y equals mx plus b, where this m thing here is the slope and the b is the y-intercept. To get the slope, you can do the change in y over change in x, and that would just be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And then to get the y-intercept, you can solve it uh, using y minus mx. You can just bring the mx over to the other side, and then we know the slope. You can get that using this formula. And then for x and y, you can plug in either of the two points. Doesn't matter. Either one will work. And that will allow you to solve for b. So let's look at an example. Suppose I have the function f of x equals x squared. And here's a graph. This looks like your basic parabola. And maybe I want to find the equation of the secant line that uh, connects the points at x equals 1 and x equals 4. In other words, this line right here. So if I wanted to do that, I would need to assign uh, coordinates to the two points. So I have a point right here. And so I see that the x-coordinate is 1 and the y-coordinate is also 1. You can read that off the graph, or you could plug 1 in for x. 1 squared is 1, and you would see that you have 1 comma 1. And then the other point right here that we know has an x-coordinate of 4 and a y-coordinate of 16. And again, you can plug that in. 4 squared is 16. And so this is 4 comma 16. And we can now calculate the slope. So the slope is the change in y over the change in x. So that would be 16 minus 1 divided by 4 minus 1. 16 minus 1 is 15. 4 minus 1 is 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So now I can look at the general equation of the line, y equals mx plus b. I know m is 5. And so b then would equal y minus 5x. And for x and y, I can use either point. I can use 4 comma 16 or 1 comma 1. I'll use 1 comma 1. That's probably a little bit easier. So that means y and x are both going to be 1. So I would get something like this. And 1 minus 5, that's negative 4. And so the final equation of my secant line would be y equals 5x minus 4.